we have yet again another very important Tesla stock update that you need to know heading into the trading day tomorrow. Some Tesla stock news, some GM news, but I think what is even more important is what is going on over in Israel. We do have some updates on the war, and these are not exactly great updates. I wish we had better news to go over, but hey, the news is the news, and we're going to cover it regardless. We also do have... A very fascinating chart from Carson Investment Research that plots out the one, three, and six month performance of black swan events bad things that have happened in the markets and how the markets have reacted to it. And there's a trend that typically comes true about. 60% of the time. So I want to give you guys that information as well as the MOC imbalance. This is the market on close imbalance today. It was very negative, which is just not great. And Goldman Sachs points out that right now on our markets, you have the most short positions that you have seen since 2018, which is more than COVID. The COVID crash, remember that? More than COVID, more than 2022. So right now is very surprising. This could either be a sign that maybe the markets do reverse course and start heading higher soon, or maybe it's a sign that we have a lot more downside to come. Let's go ahead and get into all of this information. We have a lot more to cover than just that, so I hope you're ready for a jam-packed video. If you are, and you do own Tesla stock, or at the very least, you want to better your family's destiny and future and drink Bahama Mamas on the beach and margaritas, or maybe some Estrella, hit that like button, as well as subscribe to the channel. Let's start this video off with a war update, because this is the single biggest thing that is going to continue to affect the markets. The Israeli deputy commander killed on the Lebanese border. The Israeli military has announced that one of its deputy commanders has been killed in Monday's exchange of fire between Israel and Hezbollah forces in southeastern Lebanon. At least four Hezbollah fighters were also killed in the fighting. This is as of night minutes ago. Now, if Hezbollah gets into this fight, then you have even more problems. They are based right there on the border with Israel, and it looks like they're starting to get engaged with this conflict, but they haven't full-fledged actually started yet. Now, why this could be a problem is just due to the sheer amount of advanced rocket systems they have. These are supplied by Iran, and back in 2006, Hezbollah had around 15,000 rockets and missiles. Today, it's estimated they have 130,000 rockets and missiles. This would be a very significant conflict, just if you look at the missiles here, right? That would not be good, and you'd probably get some U.S. involvement at that point. That could tip the scales and push Iran or other Arab countries into this conflict as well. Now, why is this important? Let me be honest with you. The markets will get over Israel and Habala pretty quickly. As long as nothing escalates from there, from where we are right now, then markets are going to go back to trading however they have been trading, probably focused on the bond market. As long as the situation does not spread, if it spreads, that's where we get further downside in the markets. That's how you could get a 20 plus percent pullback in the markets. If the U.S. were to get involved, if Iran were to get involved, Hezbollah got involved in the U.S. and some of our allies were to get involved as well. You now have Israel that just announced that they mobilized a record 300,000 reservists. So either they are planning to invade Gaza in full force or they're expecting maybe something else to break out. Maybe it's Hezbollah, maybe it's Iran, who knows? This is a massive amount of troops being mobilized. This is double the amount that they typically have on active duty. According to Alpine Macro, this is a hedge fund, quote, the conflict's course is uncertain, but will very likely escalate, probably contributing to a significant risk off global environment over the next one to three months. And this is the chief strategist 
at Alpine Macro. Think of Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022. That was in February of 2022. And we know what happened the next preceding couple of months, the next six months. It was pretty rough in the markets. According to Unusual Whales, banks are bracing for a recession as per market watch. So at the same time we have this conflict breaking out in the Middle East and there's war again, the US economy does not exactly look like it's going to be that strong in 2024. If you look at some of the data, it does not look good. The yield curve is uninverting. Typically, that happens right before a recession. The consumer is dramatically slowing down. Retail stocks like a Dollar General or a Target have done pitiful over the last couple of months. The personal savings rate is down to some of the lowest points that it's ever been. The auto delinquency rate is higher than the global financial crisis. These are just not great signs. So you add this on top of it, if it does spread, big if, if it does spread, then you have a potential disaster on your hands. And today you had a market on close imbalance of 1.8 billion to the sell side. Have you ever noticed right at 3.50 p.m., you can get big moves in stocks. The index can move big time. That's because when a trader puts a market on close order on to have a trade execute by the end of the day, it happens at 3.50 p.m. So your imbalance here is basically what side are you leaning towards? It's more so positioning for the next day because a lot of the time people are getting into those positions or obviously getting out the last 10 minutes of the trading day, it's it's more so telling on what to expect the next day. And that's what you can see right here from Investopedia. The key takeaways, number one, a market on close order is a non-limit market order that is executed at or after the closing of a stock exchange. So right at 350. Traders, number two, generally would place an MOC order in anticipation of a stock's movement the next day. And number three, a surge of MOC orders can create trade imbalances at the end of the trading day. So those trading imbalances can give you a little bit of an insight on how market participants are positioning for the next day. And 1.8 billion to the sell side is big you can also see the sentiment in the markets is at some of the lowest levels it has been at in a very long time sitting right here at 68.1 you recently in june of 2022 were down here at about 50 and that was a return of 17.6 percent but even where we are now is very much recessionary kind of sentiment levels and anytime you have been under this blue line your 12 month following returns are very strong in february of 1975 you had a 22.2 percent return in may of 1980 you had a 20 percent return october of 1990 a 29.1 percent return in march of 2003 a 32.8 percent return october of 2005 you had a 14.2 percent return november of 20 of 2008 you had a 22.2 percent return in 2011 you had a 15.4 percent return in 2020 you had a 43.6 percent return and like we said in june of 2022 you had a 17.6 percent return so whether you are bullish or bearish right now you have to buy beaten down dog stocks you have to buy a tesla you have to buy some of these stocks that are well off of their all-time highs you just almost have to when sentiment is this bearish, when positioning is this bearish. Goldman Sachs says that CTAs modeled short positions of 90 billion on global equities. This is in the zero percentile. In the US, CTAs are short 47 billion of equities alone after selling 88 billion over the last 15 sessions. This is the largest US short position for this cohort on record per Goldman Sachs model. The CTAs are now buyers 
of SPX in every scenario over the next month. Now, obviously, this is Goldman Sachs model. This is not incorporating the entire markets in the grand scheme of things. 90 billion sold short or 47 billion sold short in this case is not that much compared to the overall value of the markets. So this is just one model, but still, when you're in the 0 percentile of this model's history, that's probably a pretty good sign that stocks should do well. Now, I don't think all stocks are going to do well. A Tesla's probably going to do well. Uh, Dollar General's probably going to do well. You know, a Fubo is probably going to do well. A Sofi is probably going to do well. Stocks that are way off all-time highs, that have gotten beaten down, that's where you want to be. But if you look at this chart from Carson Investment Research that basically on the left side plots out the events that have happened that are kind of like black swan events, right? This Israel war is very much a black swan event. Nobody's seen it coming. Definition of a black swan event. Do we get a black swan event kind of reaction in the markets? Well, this is where it gets interesting. So 42.1% of the time, stocks are lower after one month. But 63.2% of the time, stocks are higher three months later. Six months later, about 58% of the time, stocks are higher. And 12 months later, 63.2% of the time, stocks are higher. Now, if you look at specifically events that have happened um, with the Middle East, if you look at the Six-Day War, that was obviously uh, bullish, 13.5% uh, return one year later. The Yom Cooper War in 1973, you were down 43.2% one year later. The oil embargo, you were down 35.2% one year later. Um, some of these other events, terrorist attacks, you were down almost 19% one year later. Coal Yemen bombing, you were down almost 20% one year later. Um, Lehman Brothers down 12% one year later. Bear Stearns collapse down 41%. Um, U.S. pulls out of S out of Afghanistan, you were down 12% one year later. So it seems like these Middle Eastern crises are kind of, you know, have, have a bad track record of pulling down the markets. Even the Hungarian uprising was, I mean, you were down 12% one year later. So not exactly the greatest precedence for events that take place in the Middle East. But again, I really want to stress this. At this point, if it does not escalate into Hezbollah, Iran, Saudi Arabia, the US, or someone else, the markets are probably already over this situation. As long as nothing crazy happens and you were to see like a nuclear bomb go off, which I don't think that's advantageous for anyone, then you're probably over this situation. Now, you also need to remember we're going to have important economic data that will come out throughout the rest of this week, really starting on Wednesday. You're going to get PPI month over month and then the FOMC minutes. On Thursday, you're going to get CPI in which all of your inflationary data you're expecting to come down and come down quite a bit from last month's numbers a lot of those numbers were inflated due to the spike in oil the spike in energy and then on friday you're going to get the michigan consumer sentiment survey so you do have some pretty big data reports that are going to be coming out this week tomorrow's really going to be dominated around fed speakers um let's go ahead and pull this up so Starting off at 9.30 in the morning, you're going to have Fed Bostic and uh, consumer inflation expectations at 11 a.m. You're expecting 3.2%. If that comes in higher than 3.2%, then you're probably going to have a problem on your hands. Fed Waller speaks at 1.30 p.m. Fed Kashkari speaks at 3 p.m. And Fed Daily speaks at 6 p.m. Now, you're also going to have the bond market, which is open. And again, stocks today went higher. But bonds went higher as well. So bond yields went lower. When oil's up 4%, you shouldn't have seen that happen. So if, if you're someone that hopefully pays attention to the bond market, if you are an active trader, if you're a long-term investor, just, just, just buy Tesla and sit and, and hold it, okay? But if you're actively trading this market, 
then you probably noticed exactly what I'm saying. Bonds being up today on a very inflationary day, as far as oil going up 4%, it's just not great. And to kick off the Tesla stock news and GM news we're going to cover in this segment of the video, why not start it with your daily dose of the Cybertruck and what a frunk shot is that one. Tesla is dirtied up. Looking real good if I were to say so myself. Tesla's Model Y is the world's best selling EV in August as global EV sales reach 18%. The Tesla Model Y became the best selling electric car in the world in August, selling twice as many vehicles as its closest competitor, the BYD Song. Thanks to unstoppable sales growth from Tesla and several other manufacturers, global sales of electric vehicles have reached 18%. Morgan Morgan Stanley's Adam Jonas has released a new Tesla note. The next generation software defined vehicles may blur the lines between the automobile and the mobile device market. He reiterated his $400 price target over the next 12 months. Part of Adam Jonas note says, does Elon Musk plans to turn X into an everything app require development of hardware outside the car? Answering that question is extraordinarily difficult. As discussed in our recent defense of the robotaxi, the ultimate destination of the future of mo mobility will be anything but ordinary. Exhibit 1. Time to bring back the car phone? Tesla's option activity did indeed spike hard into the end of the day. We ended off the day with 597 orders totaling $756.81 million with a positive order value of 54%. In the last video, option activity was only at about $90 million, so that last 45 minutes, half an hour of trading or so, you had about $600 million dollars head into Tesla options and with a positive order value of 55% it's not the most bullish of days but most of these dollars went into bullish positions in Tesla buying calls or selling puts the dollar amount currently sold short in Tesla stock is 22.53 billion Tesla remains by far the most shorted stock on the markets Tesla also sits in a very interesting position you're above your 50-day moving average you're right below your longer term downtrending line of resistance and you're right above your longer term uptrending line of support that you set back here in January of 2023 when Tesla hit its low of $100 per share. The next move higher or lower is either going to come from the Cybertruck, maybe earnings, but probably the Cybertruck for your upside move, or any market weakness for your downside move. As you can see right now, in after hours, Tesla's stock is down 0.60%. So almost 1% in after hours, which is, is strange when you consider the futures really aren't moving all too much. Maybe there's some news that is about to come out for Tesla, or maybe the strike with GM, Ford, or Stellantis is actually going to come to an end. Maybe the new contract GM just submitted to the UAW is enough. The new offer is a 20% wage increase over the life of the agreement, including a 10% increase in the first year. Nearly all UAW members working at GM will make $39 $39.24 per hour in base wages by the end of the agreement. Reinstatement of COLA for team members at max wages starting the second year. No change to healthcare premiums and Juneteenth up to five weeks vacation, two weeks of paid maternal leave. And then temporary workers are going to make $20 an hour and their steps to become a full-time member or employee will... Uh, be reduced it'll be quicker to get hired in as a full-time employee for GM and retirement the company will contribute 8% of wages previously it was 6.4% for active in-progress employees and the company's contribution uh, for health care in retirement increased to $1.25 per hour worked previously it was only 
a dollar per hour worked for active in progress employees so maybe the uaw is going to accept this contract and that could be a reason why tesla stock is down here in after hours but until we get that news it's hard to say for sure what is causing this move lower futures right now are we can go ahead and look are actually in the green so tesla stock being down 0.6 is quite the down move but as sawyer Merritt says another day another strike uaw workers strike mac trucks after rejecting the latest contract as you can see from this photo joe tetmeyer shared to us today this photo from October 6th was unmilled rear Cybertruck castings from his October 6th, 2023 video. And now you're seeing finished front Cybertruck castings from October 9th. So from today. So the two main parts of the car, well, you can see quite a few of them. So production is definitely happening right now it's only a matter of time before we get the cyber truck and in my opinion only a matter of time before we see tesla's stock rally off of that news into the 300 hundred dollar level now if you get further expansion into the conflict in israel with iran hezbollah or even the u.s getting involved that's the only thing I really can see right now that would derail Tesla. If yields continue higher, if the dollar continues higher, that's not going to be great, but it's not going to cause Tesla or the markets to crash at this point, unless you got some really big move in which looks very unlikely. The biggest danger to the markets in the short term is this Israel conflict. But obviously, it's impossible to say if this is going to get to be a larger conflict or what is ultimately going to happen all in all it makes sense to have some hedges on your portfolio but you don't want to sell tesla i don't want to sell tesla that's my personal opinion i'm not a financial advisor do whatever you guys got to do for your situation i have not sold a single share throughout any of of this i haven't i don't think i've sold a share since like a, a while okay i buy stocks and i hold them i buy tesla and i hold it so that's what I continue to plan to do if tesla stock does fall man i hope it does because i'm gonna be a huge huge buyer so that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video hit that like button subscribe to the channel and source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section if you guys want to come trade with us live in real time get access to all of the trades that i make every single day whenever we make trades whether they are hedges yolos earnings trades swing trades spreads whatever it is we're doing just buying long-term shares link down below in the description of this video my name is michael tyler enjoy the rest of your day and i will see you in the next one